As a rule of thumb, I no longer work on Mesa products, and I don't recommend Mesa products, whether made by Mesa or under the new Gibson ownership. And I get a lot of flack from that on this channel, and people dismiss what I have to say. And, and that's fine. It's their right to waste their own money. Um, this particular one is a Strategy 88, a huge base amp with eight 6550s. And um, it originally came in because it had burned in this area. It had burned up uh, these plate resistors. It had burned the grids, uh, the screen grids down there. It had burned the grid stoppers. Uh, the bias circuit was all chewed up. They have those little blue box trim uh, pots. And someone had used the wrong screwdriver, and they were all shattered. And a few other things. Uh, there's a electrolytic in the main supply, uh, in the main preamp now that used to be a tantalum that had died. You know, the usual stuff. And I re rebuilt all that, and I had to rebuild some of the stuff on the, on the output board there. Like, that's a new relay. That's a new opto coupler. Uh, some new resistors and a new Darlington transistor. All those things had been affected by the output going wonky. Uh, and the app seemed to be okay at that point, but occasionally it would start to um, do lightning shows at, or just make distortions in its output at, at higher levels. And I took the app back in, and um, in testing, everything seemed to be fine on the scope for like an hour or two. And I'd turn it off, and I'd come back, and then the next time I turned it on, it would have problems within five minutes, and the next time, it'd be three hours before the problem came back. So it was really difficult to troubleshoot. And at some point during this testing, coincident with it, with it drawing too much current, all of a sudden, there was a spike in current, all of a sudden, uh, the output level dropped dramatically. The uh, big, expensive output transformer were tested fine. So then I went through and started measuring things, and I thought, ah, okay, they got some some hidden J174s here and there muting different things, and one of those is just probably not opening all the way. That can happen with the J174 transistors pretty commonly. So I thought, okay, that's what the issue is going to be. So I put everything back together, and I started taking voltage measurements. And all of a sudden, there was smoke coming from this section. Uh, obviously, the 250-ohm resistors here had charred, and I changed those out. But then I noticed these pinhole burns here and over here where the actual traces had self-immolated. And mind you, all I was doing was operating the amp. There had been no inciting incident. And then I found that traces here were burned on top and here were burned on top. And I thought, well, what the hell? It has been drawing way too much current. The most obvious place it could be would be a short in any one of these capacitors associated with the various low voltage supplies. So you've got 12, uh, uh, 18 and 18, or 15 and 15, 15, 15, 12. So positive, negative 15, and then 12 there. And measurements confirmed that it was way too close to ground. So I thought, okay, this cap probably did not like whatever happened. Maybe these two caps. So I need to pull this board out to be able to do that, to access the underneath side of the board. So of course that meant taking everything off the front panel so that I could disconnect things, uh, so I could pull the board up with all those little white plastic standoffs. It's really fun. If you gotta desolder some wires down in this area and uh, undo all the uh, zip ties, so those can all be bundled up together later. In order to do that, you've gotta pull the quick connects off the power and standby switches, at which point the standby switch fell apart. That's always a good sign. And inside the standby switch, I discovered that it had been arcing for some time. You can see that black residue in there. Hopefully you can see. That's not good. Now this is an APEM switch. It's still available. Hopefully it's still available with this bat now that Mesa's no longer running their own show. Maybe this part's still available, maybe not that may be moot in just a moment. I'll show you why. Once I finally got the board up, I could see more burned traces that had just nuked themselves. And here's the thing. All these traces are very large if this were a cell phone. All, all these traces are very large if they were a VCR. These traces are comically small for a tube amp. 
for the voltages present and the current pr present in a tube amp, these traces are just too small and they're too close together and there's not enough solder on the pads. You know, these are empirical things. These are predictive, predictable and predictive things. Um, objectively, this is not up to the task of being a tube guitar amp. This trace is burned entirely. You can see it kind of flapping off there. That's always a good sign. This trace is burned entirely. It's also come off the board. I'm going to find out if this board for the Strategy 88 is still available from Mesa because it would make more sense to replace the entire board. Otherwise, I've got to go in here with very small wire and recreate all these tracks, you know, from here to wherever it goes over here and from here and from here where it goes to here. And every component that's attached to one of these things that had too much current, I've got to potentially replace. So it'd be much less expensive if the board is still available from Mesa, a populated board to just buy that and put in this amp. But these are the kind of flaws that should not exist. This amp should not uh, be able to burn itself up like this under normal operation. You know, it's not that I just arbitrarily want to hate a company because it's popular or something, you know? I don't have a personal stake in this. I just hate to see the same kinds of failures over and over and over again with certain brands. Um, tube amp design, things should be robust. PCB design should take heat and current and voltage into account and have space between components. And Mesa just really never does ever since the Mark II days. And, um, you know, I take no joy from being correct about these things. I don't enjoy having all my predictions bear out. But, you know, that's thermodynamics. If you have a problem with that, talk to Newton, not to me. I just mop the floors around here. Anyway, thanks for watching.